Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is very exciting because it's going to be the first episode of my exchange chat advice series. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. But basically, if you're watching this, it means I'm already in Italy. So I apologize if this jacket is annoying you, but it's really cold right now. So hopefully the weather is a lot better there. Um, so yeah, basically I'm just going to be covering the first part of an exchange, which I think is choosing a program. So, pretty much, I think the first step is choosing a company or organization to go with. So, there's a ton of different ones out there. And what I did personally, is I just, I just Googled Student Exchange New Zealand, which is the company I'm from, into Google. And then just compared all of the different companies and their programs and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, there's a ton of different organizations out there. Um, like Rotary, AFS, um, YFU... Basically, they all have their pros and cons, like some have specialized programs in like arts and sports and stuff, and then um, other programs have like, uh, to like conditions where you have to like host someone yourself, so it just depends on what you're looking for, um, really. I would say just do your own research and what you're, like, <laughs> and see what you're interested in, um. Personally, for me, I went with NZIIU, which is just a New Zealand organization. It's quite a small um, company as well, which I kind of like because it's kind of like a more personal touch, I guess. And um, they also had like quite inexpensive program fees. Although I would say don't just choose the cheapest program fee because um, like there's a lot of things you have to consider, like flights and insurance and stuff. Um, I think Rotary overall is the cheapest and they um and they pay you like a stipend as well I believe but you don't get to choose um what country you go to so it just kind of depends on your personal preference and what you're looking for so after you've chosen a pro a uh, company um I would say next is choosing a country so some people already have a country in mind like if you already learn a language then I definitely suggest going to that country just to improve your language skills. Um, but it's different for everyone, so I n never really took a language, so I was kind of restricted at that point. Um, but personally, I knew that I wanted to go somewhere in Europe, and I also wanted to learn a different language as well. Um, just because I thought if I'm going on an exchange, you know, I want to go somewhere that's quite different to where I'm from originally. And also, um, keeping in mind if you have like dietary requirements, um, since I am vegan, I was only like kind of limited to the countries that I could go to just because some countries don't accept uh, like vegans and vegetarians and things like that. So just contact um, like different companies and see like what they accept. But so yeah, basically I was kind of, at the end I nailed it down to three countries I think. Um, Italy, Germany, and the Netherlands. So those were like the three com countries that I was considering. But in the end, I chose Italy just because I'd always wanted to travel there. I really like the culture and the art. And just, I think as like from a foreigner's point of view, I, I preferred that language. Um, no offense if you're from the Netherlands or Germany. I'm sure there's a great countries to go to. Also something really important to keep in mind is the school. So as an exchange student, that's where you're going to be spending most of your time. So I'd say research like school in different countries um, and like whether you have to take particular subjects and whether um, like the school day and the time, for example, I know in Italy, I think they have school on Saturday. So yeah, just keep in mind what you're looking for in terms of like um, the school life as well. Like some countries they don't have any like co-curricular activities whereas if you're going to like America then I know they have a ton of clubs and different stuff to join so yeah that's really um that's quite a big part of choosing uh which country to go to as well so yeah it just depends on your personal preference really um personally I don't think like country is going to make a huge difference like I think um, an exchange is going to be great either way, so yeah, don't stress out about it um, too much. Um, but yeah, just pick the one that you think you'll enjoy, I guess. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and also things to consider are how long you want to go for. So this kind of depends on a few things. Um, firstly, I would say your budget. Obviously, a longer exchange is going to cost more. But when you think about it, um, like in terms of how long you're going to stay there for, it is kind of cheaper, I guess. Um, so for example, like a five month program could be $4,000 and then a 10 month program is going to be say 6,000. So it's two, so it's like less than, so it's still like more obviously, but it's not like double the price, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's just something to keep in mind, I guess. Um, personally, I chose to go on a 10 month program just because I figured if I'm going to go, I might as well go for as long as I can. And that way I learn more of the language and can experience more, but also you have to keep in mind living costs. So like the spending money that you're going to need. Um, but yeah, <laughs> there's also like really short programs as well. If you just want to go say during the holidays, you can go for two months or three months. So just check in, um, and see what like programs the company offers. Um, and the last thing I want to cover is just when you should, de when to go on exchange. So depending on, uh, the program that you choose, usually um, companies will have two like main departure dates so you can either go in January at the start of the year or like August which is kind of in the middle of the year so from my experience January is more popular just because you're not leaving like halfway through the year but since I decided to go on my exchange in year 13 which is the last uh, year of high school I thought I should go in August um, just because that way I can like finish NCEA and my last year of school, I guess, and um, like have the qualification to get into uni. So yeah, that's kind of my um, experience and the way I did it. But obviously, if you want to go in January, that's completely fine. Um, when it comes to like when to go on exchange, um, personally, I kind of had the idea quite late so if I could go back I'd probably just go at the beginning of this year that way um I'm not leaving halfway through and I can just like just do the whole year kind of um but yeah it really depends on I guess your situation and your personal preference um but definitely like uh I'd say let your like ask your school and kind of see um, what your like situation is, I guess. Like, if you're in year 12, I wouldn't recommend going in the middle of the year just because you wouldn't really, it's just kind of like an awkward time because then you'd be coming back in like the middle of year 13. So yeah, I mean, it's really up to you, <laughs> but that's just kind of like my um, opinion. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you guys found this video helpful. It was kind of rambly, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye!